would you like to go over some math concepts that might be found on your math certification exam? My name is Amy Sink, and I'm one of the math specialists here at the Learning Liaisons. Before we begin, make sure that you like and subscribe to the Learning Liaisons YouTube channel. All right, let's get started. Hey everybody, welcome to Hot Topic Videos. In these Hot Topic video segments, we're gonna be talking about some big concepts that are often, that often give people a little bit of struggle. So these are topics that people often struggle with and they're bigger topics. So we're gonna dive into some Hot Topic videos or some concepts that are covered on your exam so that you have a better understanding and a deeper understanding of how to solve problems that fall under these concepts. So let's start with linear functions. So first of all, before we talk about linear functions, we have to know what a function is. A function in math terms is a relationship of a set of inputs to a set of possible outputs where each input is related to exactly one output. That's so mathy. A function not so mathy is it passes the vertical line test. So if I were to draw a function here, so I've got my or, or my coordinate grid, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, you get it. And I were to draw a function on here, let's say a linear function, because we're talking about linear functions right now. This would be considered a function because it passes the vertical line test. A vertical line test means that I can draw a vertical line at any point in this graph, and it only hits the graph one time. Now, let's draw a function or a graph that is not a function. So here's another coordinate grid, and there's my graph. It's still a graph. It's still got x's and y's. It's just not a function, because if I draw vertical lines through this graph, it hits two times. Now, it doesn't have to hit two times all the time. This one just happens to. So this is not a function. Now, let's think about how many x's and y's does it have? Like in this case, uh, what is repeating? The x or the y? The x is repeating. So if I were to label these points, we'll call it 1, 2, 3, 4. This would be 4, 2, and this would be 4, negative 1. Because that x is repeating, it doesn't pass the vertical line test. So because the input is repeating, input is the same thing as the x, it's not a function. So each input has only one output. Now, can my outputs repeat? Absolutely. Could I have a graph that looks like this? Let's see. That would be a function because it passes the vertical line test. And even though this point and this point have the same y, each input, which two separate x's, has only one output. So that's the definition of a function in general. Like we talked about, it passes the vertical line test. So I want you to look at these three graphs and play along with me. Does it pass the vertical line test or not? We'll play the vertical line test game. So does letter A pass the vertical line test? Ding, 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 ding. It passes the vertical line test. If I drew vertical lines, no matter where I drew them, it passes. Check. So this is a function. It's called a linear function because it's a line. Mathematicians are not very creative when they name things. All right. What about this one? Letter B. This is a function. Now, this one might have tripped some people up because when I draw a vertical line, it looks like it's going to become straight up and down. That's where your understanding of what this function is comes into play. This is called a quadratic function. And a quadratic function is, the parent version is f of x equals x squared. We'll talk about parent functions later. But it mean, it's not going to ever go all the way straight up and down, so it does pass the vertical line test. What about letter C? 
not a function because it does not pass the vertical line test. I draw a vertical line through it and I hit it two times and this is called a circle. Not very creative, it's literally a circle. So not, it does not pass the vertical line test so it is not a function, still a graph, just not a function. So linear function, so we're going back to this kind of function right here is where we're gonna focus today. Linear functions have three different forms. Standard, slope intercept, point slope. Again, I've said it like four times already. Mathematicians are not creative when they name stuff, which is beneficial for you and I, because it gives away what information it has. So slope intercept form literally includes the slope and the intercept. M is your slope, B is your y-intercept. Point slope form, what do you think that's gonna give you? <laughs> you got it, a point and a slope. A point and a slope. So when we look at the point slope form equation, our slope is still going to be M, so thank goodness we can use the same variable to represent that. And our point is going to be x1 and y1, where x and y are going to stay the same. So x1, y1 is your point, m is your slope. Pay attention to the fact that in the actual formula, these are negative, which means that if my point is positive, it's going to be plugged into this form, which is going to show as a negative. Take, for instance, this form right here y minus 3 equals m times x plus 4. The point on this line is going to be negative 4 comma 3. Because if I plug negative 4 into here, it would be a negative negative 4. And we know that a negative times a negative equals a positive. So you want to look at the signs in the point slope form, and it's going to be the opposite of whatever you see. Standard form is ax plus by equals c, and that's not very helpful unless we're doing um, elimination or substitution. So the only time you want it in standard form is pretty much elimination or substitution. So if it's in standard form, you can put it into slope-intercept form to give you more information about that graph. Slope. Let's talk about slope for a minute. So we talked about how they have a slope, but what is a slope? Again, we're still only talking about linear functions, which are all kinds of lines. There's all sorts of lines, but these are all straight lines, not squiggly lines. So a linear function is a straight line, not a squiggly line. So slope, the change in y divided by the change in x, which is rise over run. Most of us can remember slope as rise over run. run. Well, rise is the y value on your coordinate plane. Run is the x value on your coordinate plane. So if we're doing rise over run, we're doing y's divided by x's. So we're going to subtract the y's and subtract the x's if you have two points of your graph. So it doesn't matter. You'll see the formula written like this too. It doesn't matter if you do y2 and then y1 or y1 and then y2, just as long as you keep the same point first. So if I do y1, then I want to do x1 first. If I do y2, I want to do x2 first. So you want to keep it the same. So again, slope is rise over run, change in y over change in x, subtract the y's over subtract the x's. So let's talk about a couple of different options for slope. If we look at all four of the lines that I drew earlier, I'll draw them all on coordinate planes so we can talk about them. And we think about which direction we read. Do we read from left to right or do we read from right to left? We read from left to right. And we also read graphs from left to right. So we read words from left to right we are also going to read graphs from left to right. So when I read this graph, 
I'm going from left to right, and my pencil is going to start down here and rise up. That means that this line has a positive slope. Let's read this graph from left to right. Left, up, my graph is going to start up here, and so it's going down. If I have a car, and I put a little car on here, the car is going up, the car is going down, here. Can my car drive straight up into the sky? I mean, it could drive on a pretty steep incline, but can it go straight up into the sky? Impossible. So this has an undefined slope. This has no slope. Don't get that confused with a zero slope. No slope and zero slope are two different things. We can also call this undefined. And then this one is going to have a zero slope because this car is just driving straight across the line with no incline. So this has a zero slope. Now, in our understanding of slope, we can talk about parallel and perpendicular lines. So if we look at another coordinate plane, and I draw two lines, one, two. These would be considered parallel lines. Why would they be considered parallel lines? Because they're never going to intersect ever, ever, ever. Parallel lines never intersect. Perpendicular lines intersect in a very unique way. Perpendicular lines intersect at a 90 degree angle. So if I drew these two lines, and I'm totally eyeballing this right now, we're pretending like these have negative reciprocal slopes. These are perpendicular lines. Perpendicular. Because they have negative reciprocal slopes. What is a negative reciprocal? Well, negative is just what you think. If my slope is positive, then the other one has to be negative. If my slope is negative, the other one has to be positive. And reciprocal would be, if I have A over B, the reciprocal would be B over A. So the negative reciprocal would be negative B over A. So perpendicular lines have a negative reciprocal slope. So it's important to understand this relationship because you might be asked a question about parallel lines, perpendicular lines, the equation of one or another. And so understanding the relationship between parallel lines, perpendicular lines, just lines that intersect and slope is super important. So here's an example. Let's walk through a couple of examples before we close out this hot topic on linear functions. Which of the following is the equation of the line that passes through the points negative 5, negative 3, and negative 3, negative 5. All right, in order to find an equation of a line, we need a slope for sure. I mean, slope intercept form and point slope form both have a slope. We also need either a y intercept or a point on the line. Well, unfortunately, when we look at our answer choices, these are all in standard form. And I told you, standard form is not helpful because it doesn't give us information about the graph. So what I need to do is I need to go through and put these into point slope or slope intercept form. So these are all in standard form right now. And in order to better read the graphs, we need them in point slope or slope intercept. The easiest one is going to be to put them in slope intercept form. So I'm just going to add the x to both sides, and I get y equals x minus 8. I'm going to do the same thing to all of these. Add the x, y equals x minus 2. Subtract the x, and I get negative y equals negative x minus 2. And then I have to multiply it by a negative 1 to get rid of that negative y. And I get y equals x plus 2. So now I have all of my equations in slope intercept form. Now what? Now just find the slope between these two points. So remember, 
y minus y over x minus x. So I'm going to do this one first. Negative 3 minus negative 5 divided by, because I did this one first, I got to do this one first. Negative 5 minus negative 3. Remember, what is a negative times a negative? A positive. So five, negative 3 plus 5 is 2. Negative 5 plus 3 is negative 2, which gives me a slope of negative 1. That means that the only answer choice that has a slope of negative 1 is B. All the other answer choices have a slope that is a positive 1. This one has a slope that is negative 1, so B is the only answer. Now, I would stop there, move on. However, I need you to understand how to continue to work through this problem just in case there was more than one answer choice with a negative slope. So now I would plug it into point slope form and manipulate it because I have two points. So point slope form says y minus y1. Actually, I'm going to change colors here. Point slope form says y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. So y minus negative 5 becomes a positive. Negative 1 times x minus negative 3. Now just manipulate it to get it into slope-intercept form. y plus 5 equals negative x minus 3. Subtract 5 from both sides, and we get y equals negative x minus 8. Would you look at that? It matches. Of course it does. But I wanted you to see how to do the next step in case you were left with two or three answer choices. <laughs>